All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the building. LT is in the building, and we have some graduates in the house today. Today, we're going to focus on one particular graduate. His name is Kelvin Bell, and he's going to talk to you about his journey in self-publishing. So I have a commencement hat here, and it's a commencement ceremony because it's the end of one chapter, but the beginning of a new season. So as you are listening and you're paying attention and you're enjoying the speakers, I want you to think about in your life, what chapter are you closing and what season are you beginning? So graduation is not just for high school and college. It's also for these adults that are on the line um, because we're going through a journey and we all have learning stops. We all have milestones and it's important to celebrate along the way. So that's what this is all about. All right, so welcome to our first commencement ceremony at Self-Awareness University, which is a university that I created for people who want to learn self-publishing. And here's our agenda. We are a little bit behind because we got to know each other in the beginning, but that's okay. It was not time wasted. It was time well spent. I am LT, the buddy teacher, also known as Latasha Jimerson. And we are gonna have a motivational speaker, Kelvin. We're gonna have a keynote speaker, Dr. Terrence Meekins. And we're gonna have a Q&A at the end, and then I will close us out probably around 10 after six. All right, so today is September 1st, 2020. It marks the beginning of new month. It also marks the beginning of a new course. All right, we're also gonna call this Happy Authors Day. Kelvin Allen Bell created this beautiful book. And the name of the book is called Back to Eden, An Inside Out Journey. And in the beginning, an online course was born. A teacher wanted to try something new and offered a course for people who wanted to learn self-publishing as a system. The July cohort started on July 1st. And they became a family. And that family got bigger and bigger. And struggles came up, but we learned how to smile. Perseverance happened over here on the left. There's multiple drafts of uh, Back to Eden. There's the workbook, the ebook, and the paperback. There's three separate products that we developed, Kelvin and I, together um, over the past, what, eight weeks? And those manuscripts are now products that he has to sell. So it took a lot of perseverance, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication on his part, um, a lot of sleepless nights, just being up and, and focusing and, and trying to stay, <laughs> trying to stay aware of what was going on in the midst of writing and rewriting and editing and revising, it's, it's a lot. So frustrations came up on everybody's part as we went through the process. But no matter what, we still learned how to smile. You see Kelvin there, he's got his kind of forced smile, not showing no teeth, right? Because he's like, I'm tired, I'm not trying to smile today. <laughs> Labor pains came, right? The closer to the deadline, the more the pains and the contractions. And now we see the results of his work. Not only does he have a workbook, but he also has an ebook and he has a paperback. So he's got three products that you can buy from him. A lot of hard work, a lot of determination. And now we are connected for life. So the July cohort has lifetime access to the course and we are now affiliates and we are now helping each other to build our own brands and build our own businesses. And one of the ways that we're doing that is through social media. 
new beginnings. Um, I put some things up here that I heard Kelvin say that he wanted to do in the future. Um, and now he's an author. I heard him say that he's a musician and he's also a motivational speaker, a screenwriter. I thought I heard something about television producer. I don't know, maybe I made that up. Let me know Kelvin in the chat. And then preacher. These are all the wonderful blessings that are about to happen um, as he walks into this new season of his life. I'm just gonna speak those blessings over his life right now and just say, it's coming, it's coming. All right, stay tuned. Anybody who's interested, um, I'm gonna take some questions at the end about my courses. Stay tuned because I'm building new courses like on a weekly basis. And here we are, ready for our motivational speaker, Mr. Kelvin A. Bell. And then we will follow that up with our keynote speaker, Dr. Meekins. And as you can see, the bottom right-hand corner, Dr. Meekins also has a book that's out on Amazon. And I, I see the resemblance. When I made this, it has a very sharp resemblance to Calvin's book. I thought that was interesting. So without further ado, Mr. Calvin A. Bell, you're up. Hello, everybody. Good evening. I will start with a disclaimer. During this journey, Back to Eden became Eden centricity an inside out journey. We had to go through and make sure my title, original title hadn't been taken. So in fact, you can get Eden centricity and inside out journey. Second of all, I would like to screen write. I'm not doing it just yet, but everything else is on point. So thank you, LT. I have prepared something real wonderful for everybody watching. Pay close attention. I have entitled this Repairers Repair. When was the last time you had to have something serviced or repaired? Was it your Nissan, Toyota, or Ford? Was it your iPhone, Android, or laptop? Was it the roof, the fencing, or plumbing? It is cur or is it currently your Experian credit score, criminal record or IRS records? I'm sure you can recall the emotions you felt connected to these events. You may have even shared them with some others, your spouse, your BFF, or a counselor. One common thread of emotion experienced by many, I'm sure through the process of repairing these circumstances probably was distress. Even now in this atmosphere around us reeks with stress as we deal with the effects of COVID-19, injustices between the races, political party, hostilities between police and people, civil unrest, financial instability, social distancing and Zoom learning between students and teachers. An undercurrent of stress like never before exists within the hearts of many. Yet and still, there is hope for these hopeless situations. In fact, I will place my money on you listening to me right now. You have inside of you what it takes to rebuild and to repair anything. Particularly as newly self-published authors, we have been called to repair dreams, visions, and hopes for a better tomorrow today. Why? Because repairers repair. <laughs> That's who we are. Greetings to our coach, Letitia Jamerson, affectionately known as TD, LT, the buddy teacher. To the ladies of the 2020 July cohort, Erica, Stephanie, Mara, to all who have been invited to our graduation, 
thank you from the bottom of, of my heart for going through this learning process since July 1st to now and hereafter. You are witnessing the rise of first responders from the literary branch of society. We expect to use our writing abilities and prowess to answer the clarion call to repair what's been wasted and consumed by torrential fires, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. In the next 10 minutes, allow me to explain how I came to rename us LT, Mara, Stephanie, and Erica, and myself as repairers of the 21st century. Through our collaborative gifts, we will repair and rebuild. Recorded in the pages of Nehemiah, an Old Testament book in the Holy Bible, a confident, a confident cupbearer to the king, blessed with the gift of consoling name, Nehemiah taught me a lot about the spirit of repairers that so desperately is needed right now. He was like LT back then. <laughs> Let me un unfold the scenario, his supplication, his sacrifice, his strategy, and his success with you to adopt for your soon upcoming opportunities to repair and to rebuild again. First, this cup bearer's job was to taste and drink everything before the king and queen dined, making sure nothing deadly would be consumed. He joyfully did this until one day he received neg a negative report about his hometown in Jerusalem. He shared the scenario with the king, then added his supplication before the king, saying, if it pleases the king, and if thy servant has found favor in thy sight, that thou would send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulcher, that I may build it. As I stop here for a moment, I am reminded of pain points discussed with Coach LT. We must continue to express our, our passions with those movers and shakers while connecting with their hearts and move them to assist us with getting our vision written in our manuals out to the distress in heart, mind, body, and spirit. Simply, our business is to repair and to build, something we cannot do alone. Nehemiah not only got the king to start his crowdfunding campaign, but he also solicited the aid of like-minded individuals to help repair the gates and reconnect the doors of opportunity throughout Judah. Listen to how this confident cupbearer and servant approached others with an opportunity to make a difference in the city. Collaborating was the key, something we have embraced over the past two months. He pitched. You see the distress that we are in? That's a pain point. How Jerusalem lie waste and, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that we no more are a reproach. It is here that I glean the concept of Nehemiah's sacrificial approach. He sacrificed the need to get all the credit and invited others to cash in on the collaborative and mutual success objective. As we began to seek pre-sales, reviews, testimonials, and loyal readers, let's remember a collaborative of cheerleaders will provide for us more media exposure and grounds to share our repairing powers of prose and literary antidotes to those who need solutions. Because repairers repair. In this hour of healing, curing, and repairing, we can reach more collaboratively than as in more collaboratively than as individuals. I can prove this point based on the response Nehemiah received from his invitation to share the wealth with others. The collaborative reply he received from the team was, let us rise up and build. 
and they, they along with Nehemiah strengthened their hands for this great work. I parenthetically must say to you ladies that we're in the middle of a great work. Next, after the discussion was unanimously made to make, to be partners with Nehemiah's vision, he revealed to them the perfect strategy, which involved the priesthood, craftsmen, artisans, and even families helping to, their, helping to do their part with restoring the gates throughout Jerusalem. A spark from within the heart of Nehemiah grew into a flame of like-minded collaborators that ultimately flared up and set the whole city blazing with a citywide effort to rebuild better. According to my speculations, I see a formula used within this citywide collaborative, which made success possible. Taking the lead in this great work, the high priest and the priesthood got Nehemiah's vision to set an example. They led the vision for, for Nehemiah and set an example for the masses. They led the liturgical community, the artisans community who learned new skills, and families throughout the communities who also learned to move from their comfort zones to heights unimagined. If not for a clear vision and strategy from the cupbearer, this great work would not have been accomplished. As one symphonic composition of gifts and talents, they all followed his for this formula while building and repairing the dilapidated gates. They would build, then sanctify their work to the creator, and finally set up the doors upon the once wasted and burned down gates. Opposing criticisms, haters, and distractions, the inhabitants of the city, founded upon peace, got their city back. What was the recurring word used in chapter three of Nehemiah? It was repaired. When everyone completed their portion of the great work, all could say repaired in the face of those preparing to do their they're part of the work. This word was the motivating word to bring hope and encouragement, proving that when we work together with the cre creator's gifts inside of us, nothing is impossible. Why? Because repairers repair. As I close, ladies and gentlemen, while we see so much distresses within our communities, neighborhoods, schools in Washington, D.C., and all over the world, believe and understand that our creator has imparted within us the repairer's flame. To my sisters, Mara, Stephanie, Erica, and Joyce, if you're watching, our stories, our paperback, and ebooks have been drenched with the repairer's anointing. Erica, your listeners and readers will know what to do next after they become born again through Jesus Christ. Stephanie, your love entwined with Gary's will have spouses all over the all over the world, letting each other off the hook so that our creator can be, be the sole source of whatever they need to dwell within a prosperous marriage. But wait a minute, wait just one moment. When a person or couples or an executive team needs an opportunity to relax, to reimagine and to rejuve, Mara, you have everything they need to repair all types of stresses in life. Your one nation under rejuve experience awaits to take us from zero to hero. Finally, None of our opportunities to become vital and necessary, self-published authors and 21st century repairers would have happened in the way it has all happened were it not for our cupbearer. Our Nehemiah with her university, university which helped turn our manuscripts into eBooks and eBooks into audibles, and yes, everything that we have for our community of cheerleaders into teachable courses. LT, the buddy teacher, to you, 
we thank you. Latasha Jimerson, we thank you to infinity and beyond, and may the Lord bless your cheerleading family. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, uh, give him a round of applause. That was amazing. Let him hear it. Turn your microphones on so he can hear it or put it in the chat. There's Outstanding. A Outstanding. Yeah. Hear that. <laughs> Go ahead, motivational speaker. Go ahead. Class preacher. <laughs> I want to book you. I want to book you. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Love and it. it was perfect. Great that job. Was good. That was good. Appreciate it. That you put thought, the thought and prayer went into that. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I felt your words to, to me personally. I appreciate mm -hmm. it so much, Kat. Definitely. Yeah. That was amazing. That was so I mean, it started out good and it just got better and better and yeah. better. Good Woo. build up. Good build up. Mm -hmm. All right, without further ado, we'll have our keynote speaker. And again, um, if you have questions, put it in the chat. I'm going to read all the questions at the end. Um, I want this gentleman to go ahead and start his speaking, and I'll mute myself. All right, Dr. Meekins, you're up. Hello, Hello everyone, and I am very humbled and honored for LT to invite me and to share what she has taught with me and with you all about selling books and more importantly, really how to manifest your books and stay positive while doing it. And right now you're off to a great start. So congratulations to all the 2020 graduates and the future graduates and the future, future graduates to come. So great words from Kelvin. I got chills definitely from the Holy spirit. Um, really hard to, uh, top that so I'll just teach on mine. So with my book, uh, really going through Tasha's teaching, I really use the Bible as five steps taken out of Mark chapter 11 verses 22 through 24 and a couple other verses. But Mark chapter 11, 22 says, have faith in God. So as I began to write my book, my book took me about three months to write with her coaching and teaching and to get it published and online. And I'm glad I had her because Sometimes there's a lot of delays and a lot of hiccups and a lot of roadblocks where people don't want to take the next step to getting it online because of criticism, because of what are they going to think? Or here's the big one. It's not perfect enough. And once you get that out of your mind, then you'll begin to expand your book a little bit more and more and more and more and reach more people because the books that you're writing now are here to really change the world on so many different levels because there's a lot of spirituality in it. There's a lot of God in it. And because of that positivity, uh, when the two or three are gathered, now things begin to happen. Okay. So I call this the be, do, have process uh, when I was doing my book. And basically it's keys to manifesting because when I started, when my book got published, I would only get like maybe one or two and I was going, Oh, that's a, such a small number. And I would beat myself up because I wanted big numbers. You know, we always want big and I kept praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Oh, I want big, I want big, I want big. And it seemed like that number just wouldn't go up. And I think God said, wait a minute, your book has been out there for about a year and a half and you've only missed one month of nobody buying your book. Why are you complaining about the large number when people are still buying your book? He says, don't look at the number, enjoy the process and be thankful for the people buying your book. And I went, well, that makes sense. So what it allowed me to do was get ego out of the way and let spirit come in. And it's beginning to teach me, have faith in God. It was have the God kind of faith that he's going to take care of it. So what I teach my church is the five steps. The first step is always, and you've all heard it, ask. When you ask in prayer, you have to ask knowing that your prayers have already been asked 100% with no doubting. Step two, God does the work. So Mark chapter 11, 23, who shall say to this mountain? And like I was telling Sister Jemison earlier, 
I was wilderness wandering for 40 years around this mountain, trying to climb this mountain, trying to do everything with this mountain. And God says, wait a minute, you're the mountain. Get out of the way and let me do the process. So I had to accept God does the work, truly does the work. And I had to get out of the way and trust God that he was going to do the work, even if it didn't make sense in my natural mind. Step three, I had to really believe 100% in my heart that God had done it. It's already done. What made me really start getting into it was step four, receive. Whatsoever you shall decide when you pray, ask, you say what? Receive it. I started noticing that that I was wanting all around. I'll give you guys a perfect example. When you begin to buy your houses and your cars, you just didn't let the realtor sell you any of your house or the car dealer sell you any of your car. You went through the process of word, thought, deed, or be, do, have. Ask, believe, receive. So step five is enter his gates with thanksgiving. So I had to thank everybody, whether I saw them or not, what, what, despite whatever criticism they might have, I had to say thank you. Thank you. Whether you agree with it, didn't agree with it, thank you. Enters gate with Thanksgiving. So once I did the Thanksgiving, now I could go back to step one. So God had to give me a real hard lesson where you cannot have what you want, but you can experience what you have. And I'll explain. In other words, you can't have anything you want because anything that you wanting in doubt, you push away. Okay. And I had to really get out of my head of the book. What are they going to think about the book? What are they going to think about me as the author? What are they going to think? Da, 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 da. So I had to get that thought out of my head and get into the right thinking of God. So thought is creative. Word is creative. Action is creative. So now you have word, I'm sorry, thought, word, and deed. So these are the levels of creation and when I started to build my book. So when you take it, take a look at words like worldly success or I want to I want to sell multiple copies of my book. When you talk about those subjects just for a moment, you have to have that thought that it's already done. In other words, if Kelvin wouldn't have took the next step, it would not have been published. And now he can reap the fruits of the manifestation because now he has a residual income coming in. Now he can give the wife some shopping money. He took that first step. So when you understand the word, thought, deed process, now you begin to work with God and not against God. So your thought is, I want to sell a bunch of books, or I want to sell multiple copies of books, or I want to reach multiple people to influence and change lives. So you understand the creative power is kind of like a genie in a bottle. So your words, and you got to remember, this is a word planet. Everything you do is dictated by what? Words. I am sick. You see the effect of what? Sickness. I am happy. You see happy. So when you understand I want success and you believe it in your heart because you know God has already done the work, now it comes to you. So think of it this way. The word I is the key that starts the engine of creation. The words I am are extremely powerful. They are the statements to the universe, commands. Now, whatever follows the word I, which calls forth the great I am, tends to manifest in physical reality. The spirit world is more real than the natural world. So all your ideas about your books are gonna come from where? The spirit world. So now this is where Holy Spirit begins to teach you and guide you and comfort you as you go through the process. Therefore, I plus want success in book selling produces you wanting success. I plus wanting more money from book must produce you wanting money. So it can produce no other thing. And the reason because of that is because thoughts, words, 
are creative. Actions are too. So faith without works is what? Dead. So I have to act on what the Holy Spirit is doing, whether I understand it or, or agree with it or not, I got to trust God in the process. So if you act in a way that you want success and money, you have to behave that way. I had to start behaving that I'd already sold a million copies. Okay, so I had to have that mindset first and foremost and get myself out of the way. So first comes the thought, the formative idea, the initial concept. Then comes the word. Most thoughts ultimately form themselves into words which are often written or spoken. What this does, it gives added energy to the thought to push it out into the world where it can be noticed by others. Finally, in some cases, words are put into action and you have what you call a result, a physical word manifestation of a, what we're all started with a thought. Everything around you in your man-made world came into being this way or some variation of it. All three creation centers were used, word, thought, deed, or action. Be, do, have, action. But now comes the question, how do I change a sponsoring thought? So in other words, if you have some, what they call writer's block, how do I get out of writer's block? And often we would say, meditate. We would say, change your thoughts, change your ideas, walk away, take a break. All those things work. But the most rapid way to change a root thought or a sponsoring idea is to reverse the thought word deed process. To do this, you have to do the deed you want to have the new thought about. Then say the word that you want to hear to have your new thought about. Do this often enough and you will train the mind to think a new way. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So you have to develop the mind by creating a new habit. If you want to change a root thought or expansion idea, you have to act before you think. Example, if you're walking down the street and come across an old lady begging for money, you realize she's a bag lady and living day to day, you instantly know that you instantly know that as little money as you have, you surely have enough to share with her. Your first impulse is to give her some change. There's even a part of you that's ready to reach in your pocket for a little fold in money, a one or even a five or a 20. Make it a grand moment for her, light her up, make it a highlight for her day. Then comes in, are you crazy? Why would I give you $20? We've only got $7 to get us through the day. Do you wanna give her the five? So you start fumbling around for that $1 thought again. I don't have any, I don't have many of these so we start formally for the coins. You feel the nickels and the dimes. You're embarrassed. Here you are fully clothed, fully fed, and you're going nickel to dime this poor woman who has nothing. Next time, decide to act before you think. Give her the money. When you want to change a root thought, act in accordance with the new idea you have. But you must act quickly or your mind will kill the idea before you know it. New thought is your only chance. It's your only real opportunity to evolve to grow, to truly become who you are as an author, who you are as a child of God. The difference between being and doing, and most people have placed their emphasis on the latter, there is only what you choose and have on how you can have it. If you choose peace and joy and love, you won't get much of through what you're going through. If you choose happiness and commitment, you'll find little of that path of doing, doing this. If you choose reunion with God, supreme knowing, deep understanding and less compassion, total awareness, absolute fulfillment, you want to achieve much of that of what you're doing. In other words, if you choose evolution, the evolution of your soul, you won't produce that by worldly activities of your body. In this beginning of the phrase of the evolutionary phase, it starts to maximize your productivity. So what we're saying in all these words is your willingness to say yes starts the process. It's the action that's going to get it started. It's the intention, which is the single pointed focus that is unwavering to realize God is in control and he got your back. In other words, you cannot fail. Failure is not an option. 
So as you continue on with your growth as writing, continue growth in your faith. For I say unto you, you will discover at the end of this pathway is perfect freedom, perfect power, perfect spaciousness, perfect joy, and perfect peace of living literally in the kingdom of heaven. That's all I have for you. Clap, 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 clap. That was a word. It's Q&A time. We have enough time for one question from everyone. I'm going to read what's in the chat right now so we can get those questions first. Let's see. All right. 21st century repairers. Mara says yes. Thank you for those kind words. Uh, Erica, that's an excellent analogy. Was that for Pastor Meekins? Uh, yes, the one about the real estate agent. <laughs> excellent. The real yes. Thank you. And then um, Kelvin says, ask, God does the work. Believe, receive, then enter his gates with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. That's it. Good summary of what you said. <laughs> um, I don't see any questions yet. I'm looking... Ah, Stephanie says, is this the content of your book, Pastor Meekins? Um, yes and no. It's really, really telling my life story because for years being a pastor, especially growing up in religion, I really, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it now, but I used to think my gifts were curses. So I would literally shut down gifts that God gave me and suppress everything until I couldn't contain it anymore. So I began to write about it. So I prayed about it and I prayed about it and years kind of put it on the back burner. So finally I said, you know what, let me practice what I preach. Let me write a book. And I said, okay, I don't know where to start. And sister Jemison had already wrote three books at that time. So I reached out to her and she kind of helped me along the way. So I begin to tell my personal story about my growth from religion into spirituality and kind of evolve from that place and begin to share it with everyone else because a lot of people don't want to expose their gifts that God has given them because sometimes it freaks people out and they don't understand it or it doesn't relate to their religion or their beliefs or their culture or whatever the case might be. So this is basically where my book is centered about. So it's kind of my, my own personal growth from religion into spirituality into what God has used me to do now. So um, for instance, everything I do is supernatural. My teachings are supernatural. My life is supernatural. When I read, when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, over in, in the same book, Matt, Mark chapter 11, he spoke nine words. Thou shall have, thou shall not produce fruit from thou from evermore. Nine words. He didn't get up there whooping and hollering and shouting. And then he spoke to this tree and walked away. And then as you speed up the story, Peter comes along and say, hey, master, the tree that you cursed has dried up. But where did it dry up from? It dried up from the root. And I thought, wow, many years I've been speaking to the leaves of my problems and not the root of my problems. So it was easier for me to write it out and then let God take over and really just take over the wheel and say, you know what, let me be the author of your life. I got you. So hopefully that, that kind of helps. Yeah, we got two more questions and we got nine minutes. We're doing good. I thought we were behind. We're ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a million dollar question, but I'm not going to say that one yet. I'm going to ask uh, Kelvin's question. Pastor did you feel seclusion and isolation too? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And it was from fear. And I had to, when God took me to the scripture, God did not give you fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And in order for me to overcome that fear, I had to address it and really get to the root of why I was fearful and really hold myself accountable of that fear and nobody else no outsourced entity, not God's timing, not the devil stole it, me. I was, I was it. Let them have dominion. I got it. So if I got it, God got my back. Let me trust in the Lord with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul. So once I did that, I said, Holy Spirit, help me soothe my broken heart because isolation 
and those words are under fear umbrella. God only gave you two emotions, love, fear. You put everything else under those umbrellas, it'll make your process of helping your mind much better because your body will give you an indication on if you're in love or if you're in fear. If you're fearful, you're hyperventilating. The first thing they tell you, you do what? Breathe. Breathe. Calm down. <laughs> Calm your mind down. When you're in love, everybody, when you're truly in love, everybody around you knows you're in love because the presence of God is around you. The anointing is on you so strong because you give words of wisdom. You express your vibration of love. You show those smiles and those hugs. Ooh, the million dollar question. I, t I told Dr. Meekins earlier this morning that this was going to come up. And so I think Erica just brought it up. What is the solution to writer's block? Meditation. And let me say it this way, and I know a lot of Christians have a problem with this because they've taken meditate day and night out of the Bible. And there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times they've taken that, those scriptures and meditated day and night and tried to move God and nothing happened because they didn't understand the process. When the Bible says to meditate day and night, it really just means what we just talked about, about taking that time when you get up in the morning and just sit quietly and spend time with God. Take that breath and breathe in. In, in the beginning, he says he breathed in what? The breath of life into Adam. So I'm gonna breathe in the breath of God into my life. Yes, I'm a Christian. <laughs> But people will go meditation is another religion and then discount it, but then use it all the time. Get in fear. Oh, calm down, breathe. Well, that's meditation. But then let me tell you what real meditation is. Meditation is nothing more than this. Stopping the resistant thought. That's nothing more, nothing less. It has nothing to do with religion. Meditate day and night because, and watch this. When you don't meditate day and night, you don't understand rejoice in trouble. Because when trouble happens, people react. And they don't normally react the way God wants them to react in a Christian way. They normally act or react out of the emotion of fear. And not blessing the good, holding the beautiful, and letting God come in and do the work. God can rise above all that stuff. He's a, he's a heart fixer. Does that answer the question? Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank I can you. go deeper than that, but you get the idea. Yes, because absolutely. Once you rejoice, once you learn to rejoice in trouble, you really understand trusting in the Lord because now at the end of it, fear equals death. Pastor, I'm afraid of flying. No, you're afraid of dying. You're afraid of that plane falling out the sky, crashing, and you dying a horrible death. Fear equals death, always. God didn't give you fear. Matter of fact, he gave you eternal life, so how could you die? Yes, this body's going to expire, <laughs> but your life is going to continue. Pastor, how did they get a hold of you? <laughs> you <laughs> no, they're thinking. <laughs> how did they get a hold of you for more of this good stuff? Oh, 951-208-9553. Um, <laughs> Nine let me let me put it in the chat. Okay, one more time. Nine five one. Oh wait, hold on. Sorry, I gotta make it to everybody. Okay, nine five one. Two zero eight. Two zero eight. Nine five five three. Nine five five three. Any question you have biblically, call me and ask me, and we'll let Holy Spirit come in and give you the answer. What uh, you told Mar earlier? What church did you say you were at? Cornerstone Faith Church of Marina Valley. We have an in-home. The motel, but they got a little expensive, so we just did it on our home. So we were actually doing Zoom two years before the COVID even hit. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. At his, and, and at his house, too. Yep. <laughs> so you're doing seen, Zooms right now? They've seen miracles. Matter of fact, in, uh, if, if, do they know Sister Michelet? Yes. Did you tell them about Michelet? No, they know. They know a little bit. <laughs> okay, I won't. I'll, see, I'll let I'll let them read it in her book because I don't want to. I don't want that to be right. a spoiler. That Plus, first, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. That first book That's, is coming out. Her second yeah. book is already out, but the first one's coming. Well, the second one talks about her her death experience. Mm. 
So it talks about me bringing her back from the dead. So we teach greater works. Jesus never taught the natural. He only taught the supernatural. So if, if there is no proof in what is being preached, what are they preaching? Because Jesus showed you the evidence. And when he said, I'm leaving, basically in paraphrase, you are to do greater works. In other words, I won't leave you or forsake you. And then he talks about the yoke. So now we teach you the real mind of Christ. Father, forgive them all. Didn't judge the woman at the will. Didn't judge the woman who committed adultery. So now uh, we can Lamar here. said, did he say he brought somebody back from death? Yes, I did. Bring somebody back. Brought two people back from the dead. Dead, dead. Not no spiritual dead. I believe it. <laughs> well, Sister Jefferson knows the person that I'm talking about. Michelle A. smith Times. She's been on here with us before. Not only her, just um, three years before her, um, there was a woman in hospice who had died, and we brought her back. And she's still living to this day. And she's, at that time, she was 68 with stage 4 cancer, and we healed her of stage 4 cancer and dementia. Okay now, Mara says, okay now, Adonai. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Think about it. All Jesus never excluded anybody. It was always inclusion. He says, the works I do, you do. So when do we start doing his work? You're going to call yourself a Christian? Go do the work. This is a time right now, according to James 5.13, where the church should be highlighting God, laying hands on people and showing them we don't need a, vi a vaccine. We are the vaccine. But if people don't believe, guess what? They'll treat them like the lepers did in, in Jesus' day. But Jesus went to the lepers. I've grown kidneys, new kidneys. Matter of fact, four months ago, grew two new kidneys. Right. We can go on and on and on and on. Yeah, our time's up. Um, Everybody give a round of applause for Dr. Meekins and Kelvin Bell. Congratulations, class of 2020. Kelvin, I love the cover of your book. Man, you got great taste. <laughs> and, I, and I play the violin, so we're going to get together. <laughs> for real. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Group photo. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, can I do a request real quick? Can, yes. can Pastor Kelvin pray us out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> If he does, if he does not mind, after after the photo. <laughs> oh, after the photo. Okay, ready. You know I can't see. <laughs> okay, photo. Prayer. God, you've been so kind to us in this hour of impartation and receiving, Father God, of your bounty. Lord, continue to bless everyone that was on this uh, Zoom call. Amen. Let them be enriched, Father God, empowered to do those things that you already implanted for them to do. We thank you for our walking and greatness and for keep us in safety, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Safety in our dreams. And this is we this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so amen. much for joining us. Good job, Friday you night. You're gonna get an invitation to our webinar. Stephanie and I are gonna do a team teaching on audiobooks. All right. Yes. Well, yes. I issue, and I, issue, and I have I to say, and Latasha, your new look is fantastic. Oh, thank you. You look like I'm, you stepped off the runway in the photo Wakanda, shoot. Girl. Wakanda. Wakanda. Girl, do, girl, you better throw your hat back, girl. You better do it right. <laughs> <laughs> love it. All right. We love you. everybody at the top. Bye. Thank for the you. next 30 Bye, days, everybody. for the next 30 days, practice unconditional love. Bye. For life. For life. Yes, for life. <laughs> Later. See you.